here at Morningside USA. Here's your hosts, Pastor Jim and Lori Baker. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. Yeah. We have the famous Dr. Chaps with us today. Yeah. From his new, his, I don't know if your show's new, but it's on my network. I know that. I'm excited. PIJN News on the PTL network. Too many letters and all that, but it's <laughs> I, every day at 5.30 Eastern. Yeah. And thank you for allowing me such a privilege to be on, on your Aww. wonderful network. Yes. You pray in Jesus' name is what that means. Yes. Pray in Jesus' name news. Have you ever seen a TV news anchor report the news and then stop and pray in Jesus' name after every yeah. story? Amen. No. That's what we do. So we are unique. <laughs> Yay. And we pray the news in Jesus' name. Wow, he's got a story to tell today that's going to shock some of you. I mean, it's it's still, I'm in a shock over it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to wake up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to wake up. And this man is trying to wake up a lot of people. And it's really great to have him with us today. Klingenschmidt. Yes. Am I saying that right? Well, my friends call me Chaps, C-H-A-P-S, because I was a chaplain in the Navy. Yeah. And that's actually the nickname of all Navy chaplains. They go by Chaps when they're on the ship. It's kind of like you call the, the commanding officer skipper or the ex- executive officer XO or the, or the uh, operations officer. You just call them ops. And you call the chaplain chaps. And that way, the crew never has to learn your name. They just go by your title. <laughs> so, so your official, your real last name is? Klingenschmidt. Hmm. And now, Could chaps, that is true? that? do you use that on TV? Well, to, your TV show? It, it's, you? it's funny how that came about. When I earned my PhD in theology... Uh, someone in the Navy called me Dr. Chaps. Yeah. And so technically I'm a doctor, it's in theology, but not the kind that can help you until it's too late. And, <laughs> and, and then I can pray for your soul. That's yeah. it. <laughs> we all need help now, right? <laughs> Tammy Sue Baker, don't leave the stage. Yes, Jim Baker, I'm here. <laughs> Sing a song for me, just a little bit of my theme song. Would you do it? You can make it. Yeah, for you, the audience. you can make it. Oh, this trial you're going through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. And you're not in this thing alone. You can make it. (laughs) And she's singing that to my baby sister. (laughs) My Auntie Donna. (laughs) My older sister. Oh, he likes saying that, doesn't he? Because she took care of me when I was a baby. (laughs) And... uh, she helped raise me. You could say your very young older sister. <laughs> yes. Chaps, Dr. Chaps with us today. A chaplain, a former chaplain, a Navy chaplain who took a stand in praying in Jesus' name. His weekly TV show is Pray in Jesus' Name News Network. It is a national program can be seen on the PTL Voice of the Prophets Network Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Boy, you got two good times. Well, the people getting up in the morning and the people coming home from work. I, I, I'm not a morning person, but I hear it's in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Early in I'm... the morning shall my praise rise to yeah. thee. So, Amen. So thank God for I those really prophets like who are out there before I am. <laughs> Joy comes in the morning, the Bible says. Yes. And, you know, and we, we, we call this Morningside. And there's a, we named it Morningside because Joy for in his, in his mercies knew Morning. Every day, every that, morning, every morning, his mercies are new. And Thank that's the you, reason Lord, we named them. Morningside what we did. Yeah. And uh, you're known as Dr. Chaps. He taught Bible and theology at Colorado Christian University. He uh, sent five million petitions to Congress and helped change bad policies in over 13 states. So we want to welcome to our program, Dr. Gordon Kingenschmidt. 
Must be a good German name. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Chaps, you were a Navy chaplain. How long were you in the Navy? Uh, I was in the Navy almost five years, and before that I was an Air Force officer uh, uh, over 11 years, so about 16 years total as an officer. Plus, I graduated the Air Force Academy in 1991. Wow. Uh, I actually... Uh, took a demotion from Air Force major to Navy lieutenant. The Air Force said they had too many chaplains. I wanted to be a chaplain, so I took a demotion and a pay cut, and I became a Navy chaplain. And they, they sent me to sea. I was on USS Anzio, a cruiser in the Eastern Med. Our ship launched Tomahawk missiles into Iraq. I was mm. part of the war. But I led Bible study. Every night on that ship, we had standing room only, and there was a revival for wow. Jesus wow. Wow. on that Navy ship. And I prayed not just for our crew to get saved, but all the Atlantic fleet, not just the fleet, but all the Navy I wanted to get saved, not just the fleet, but I wanted all of America yeah. to come to Jesus. And I was praying for years, fasting for a national revival. And I sensed the Lord tell me one time, uh, even though I had an award-winning career as a Navy chaplain, uh, I sensed the Lord tell me, Gordon, you're always praying for revival, but are you willing to pay the price? Mm. Are, it, I said, Lord, I would even give up my career if you would just give me a national revival for Jesus. And, and the Lord said, you have a deal. You're, you're going to lose your career, mm. but you're going to gain a national revival for Jesus. Wow. And I prophesied yeah. that to my roommate. And then six months later, it happened. I was, I was punished for preaching the gospel in church. Wow. Uh, my, my commanding officer, God bless him, uh, he didn't like one of my sermons. And here I am, a, an evangelical Jesus loving chaplain, yes. and I was in the chapel. You know that building with the cross on top? This is at, at Naval Station, Norfolk, and it was optional attendance on a Saturday. I quoted John 3, 36, and this is the most controversial scripture in your Bible. It says, if anyone has the Son, he has eternal life. If anyone does not have Jesus, he does not have eternal life, for God's wrath remains upon him. Well, my commanding officer didn't like that scripture, and, and he called me into his office the next morning, and he said, Chaplain, I heard you say that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Well, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior, so are you telling me that I'm not saved? Uh-oh. What do you say to your commanding officer? I said, sir, I, I never mentioned your name in my sermon. I just, but let me pray for you. You can give your life to Jesus today. Yes. Uh, he was not interested in that. So he, he punished me in writing three times for quoting the Bible in church. He downgraded my evaluation, told the Navy board, don't renew his contract kick him out of the Navy because they overemphasized Jesus in his prayers and his sermons. Wow. So here my career was about to end, but I oh, took... Oh, how can you get in trouble for overemphasizing wow. Jesus? Jesus is what it's all about. Yeah. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is our Savior. Yes. Jesus is, if you want to say religion, Jesus is our religion. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. He is it. <laughs> And, and so the Navy rules actually say that I should be allowed to practice the faith of my civilian bishop and my ecclesiastical endorser and not the religion of the commanding officer. So the law was on my side, but they were getting ready to punish me anyway. So I took a stand. I actually stood in front of the White House in my Navy uniform, and mm -hmm. I went on a, a, a hunger strike. I called it a fast. I, I fasted for 17 days. My story was in the national newspapers, um, and I prayed in Jesus' name on national television in my Navy uniform. Well, that act of defiance actually got me punished even further, right? Mm. Because the Navy had wrote a bad policy. 1730.7c, SECNAV instruction, said that chaplains can only pray in Jesus' name if they're inside of a Sunday church that if you pray in Jesus' name outside of chapel, like on a Thursday morning, like I did in front of the White House, you can be punished by your commanding officer for praying sectarian prayers. They taught us just to pray to God and say amen, but if you're a public microphone, don't pray in Jesus' name or you can be punished. Wow. Why? I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but why would they do that? Because the name of Jesus is offensive to some people who are easily offended. Uh -huh. And so they were trying to censor us. And I read this policy. But it's the name above all names. Yes. He is Amen. the Lord of Lords. It's our Savior, the is. only Amen. way we have to heaven. He's the King of Kings. Yeah. So I decided to take a stand. I said, if they're going to... you spent your life defending the name of Jesus. I did. I, I defended the Constitution as an officer, but also as a, as a Pentecostal 
tongue-speaking chaplain, forgive me. Uh, uh, the, the, I believe that Jesus is the way to heaven. Yes. Amen. As it says Amen. in Acts 4, I think This 12. is what people got to realize. This is the country we live in yes, right now. That's right. We right. have a country that wants to be communist. The communists do not honor the name Jesus. Well, I'm sorry. I, no, I, I took a stand. I said, if they're going to punish chaplains who pray in Jesus' name, I want to be the first. <laughs> I, I volunteer to violate this policy, and that's why I stood in front of the White House in my uniform, prayed in Jesus' name on national television. I broke the policy four different ways. They offered to punish me quietly. They said, we'll give you a letter of reprimand. You might be able to keep your career. I said, no, I demand a misdemeanor court martial. And God bless the Navy brass, they granted my request. It went to a trial. <laughs> so you had a court martial, martial trial? Yes. It, wow. There was a judge and a jury and a prosecutor, and I'm in the courtroom. And on, you asked for it. I asked for it. Wow. I'm on defense. Are you crazy? Of, probably. <laughs> <laughs> crazy for Jesus. Amen. There you go. So, Amen. But they were just going to dismiss you and kind of sweep it under the rug they quietly. They wanted to. So they didn't so no, I wanted, make any waves. I wanted to blow it up in the newspapers. And uh, the judge read the new policy, 1730.7c. He said, uh, you can only do that in the Sunday chapel. But since you prayed on a, on a Thursday morning outside of the White House, now get the, the legal words he used here because it was technically in the policy. He was not engaged in public worship, which is safe. Instead, he was worshiping in public, which is not safe. So you were on trial for the praying outside the White House? For, for worshiping in public was the technical word. I was found guilty of worshiping in public in my uniform, praying in Jesus' name outside of church. That's and, you right on the screen. We got pictures of it here. And, and disobeying lawful orders based on the new policy. My story ran in 500 newspapers, and there was a miracle. That same day when I was found guilty in a Virginia courtroom, 1,000 miles off the coast of Virginia, Hurricane Gordon yeah. was swelling at full strength, and my first name is Gordon. Wow. So, so can you see that God has a sense of humor in yes. all this? Yes. That God is watching. That's right. And then, then here's the good news. Here's how it all wrapped up, uh, is that 300,000 Americans petitioned Congress with me. Wow. I had an 85% I, I public approval rating, and I went to Capitol Hill. I met with the chief of staff for the top senator over the Pentagon. I showed them the policy, and the next day, Senator John Warner made a speech on the floor of the U.S. Senate, and he said, I am being besieged by bloggers, emails, phone calls, faxes. Everyone in America wants to let chaplains pray in Jesus' name, so we are ordering the Navy to reverse this policy. Mm, wow. And by act of Congress, we won. Amen. Amen. Praise oh, God. that's a... Wow. One month later, thank uh, you, thank you, thank yes. you for well, standing. Thank, thank Jesus, right? Amen. One month later, the Secretary of the Navy repented. He reversed the bad policy, and now all the chaplains can pray in Jesus' name. Wow. It's a victory. Yeah. To this day, they can now? Yes. To this day, they... they Boy, because it was all headed the wrong direction, people. Right. Yeah. We need more men like Dr. Chaps yes. to Amen. help turn things around. Amen. Amen. But the Lord told you, you just said the Lord told you before all this was about to happen. That there would be a national revival. Wow. And that was fulfilled. That prophetic word came true. Thanks for reminding me because God was so faithful through that entire two-year process. When I, when I thought there, it was going towards the cross, right? It, it was actually going toward a resurrection. Wow. And, and Jesus gave me that national revival. When 300,000 Americans stand with me for Jesus... I think more souls came with Christ uh, in, in, through that experience. Yeah. That was, anyway, that was the beginning of my career in politics, and that was the end of my career in the Navy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I lost a 16-year career as an officer. Oh. I lost a million-dollar pension. Yes, my wife course. and I, Mary, is watching at home. Hi, Mary. Oh, uh, hi, Mary. We, we, we were evicted from our home on the Navy base. Oh, and people yeah. asked me, chaps, that's a great price to pay, but was it worth it? Would you do all that again? And what do you think I tell him? Yes. 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 Because I, I, kept I know my you soul. already. Right? <laughs> I just, just met you today. That's it. But I kept my soul when ordered by the government to deny That's Christ. It. Oh, we can't I never deny, deny Christ. Christ. People don't ever Jesus. deny Christ. Never. Never. Right. never ever. 
Wow, this is so powerful because yeah. this has got this wow. is gives us hope yeah. that we can change things. We Amen. got to stand up for Jesus That's Christ, what we believe. Yeah. That's it. I'll never turn my back on God. Amen. I don't care what Thank they do Lord. to me. Yeah. You know, I'd rather die and go to heaven right. than turn my back on Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'm I'm so thankful for what you did. And you know that that hurricane. What's that book that we have? Uh, eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. Is that, yes. I don't know if you ever read Eye William for an Eye. No. William. It's Conan. about all the storms and the hurricanes and all that. And uh, what, what William Conan, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Wrote William that book, Conan. and it's a, one of the great books of of our times. And he keeps updating it, but thousands of times when we've turned our back, like on Israel or all the things we've done mm -hmm. that are at, there would be a, a huge storm come. Yes. And so I believe God allows storms to come. I, I, it's, it's in the scriptures, yeah, you know. Absolutely. But just the fact, and this name of, it was your name on the storm. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, it, but, it, but God yes. had a different plan for my career, yes. right? So I lost that career. I guess so. <laughs> now, let me get, may I just say real quick, Please. on page 25 of your new book, and we're going to talk That's about great. them, but I just have to say this. And you already told Let's us put this on the back. screen your book, by the way. Yes. People, you can get his book. It's called How to Liberate the World. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's it. A step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. There are 30 powerful political tools that you can use to take back your country. Now, do you, exactly. Do you, do you tell the story of what we just heard on the air in this book? And 13 other victory stories, how we, how we have changed bad policies in 13 states. Wow. Because God gives us the victory, and we have thousands of people signing petitions through our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and we always win. Because I'll tell you a little secret: there's more Christian voters in this world than there are atheist voters. Amen. Yeah, we outnumber yeah. them. Amen. Yeah, right. they make us feel like we're alone, but we're not. That's right. Now we're you already shared this I want to get. Part, how much is this book? Sorry, I'm that's right. This is just for a twenty dollar donation. Order the book right now, because absolutely be twenty dollar donation that includes shipping and handling. You can receive one of the books, or we have the friends and family offer, which is three of the books, and that's for a fifty dollar donation to the ministry. Good. So uh, order your books yes. right now, people, yes. and because at the end of the show, the, the phones are busy and mm -hmm. people just absolutely. turn the TV off and they forget to do it. So I want you to get this book right now, mm -hmm. and this is a great book. I it, mean, it's it really great. Is. Isn't it a great oh, story? Oh, it really is. And, I, and, and you already just shared with us this, but this is what I want everybody to listen to. Congress ordered the Navy to rescind the, that policy, exactly everything you just sh shared with us. The Naval Secretary repented and reversed the policy, restoring freedom for other chaplains mm -hmm. to pray in Jesus' name. That's huge, first of all. But we won, but I was involuntary and honorably discharged. I lost my 16-year officer career and lost a million-dollar pension. Mm -hmm. Was it worth it? Yes, I kept my soul. Mm. Wow. Amen. Wow. Thank you. That's powerful. Wow. You know, I just, I just don't get it. I, I, I've spent a lot of time <clears throat> in Christianity now, a lot of years. What do we call this Christianity? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whose name? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who's, who is Christianity? Jesus Christ is Christianity. Yes. Amen. Yes. This reminds me of the Bible in Acts chapter 4, when Peter and John were brought before the Pharisees, and they were ordered, you must not preach or teach or anything at all in Jesus' name. But, the, but Peter and John answered, who are you, Pharisees? Should we obey men or should we obey God? And they disobeyed men and they obeyed God. They kept on preaching and teaching in Jesus' name, but they were flogged for their disobedience. But Jesus lifted them up and now they've changed the world with yeah. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Your national TV show is on our PTL Voice of the Prophets Network. And it's P-I-J-N. Pray in Jesus' name. I love that. <laughs> so we're going to show it, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Yes. Let's roll that. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. States have now passed 
90 pro-life laws in 2021, which is a new record. Guttmacher, a pro-abortion group, has doubled down on their anti-life message, calling 21, quote, the worst year for abortion rights and abortion access in U.S. history, end quote. In other words, they're mad that fewer children are being killed. A pastor has been arrested for hosting an underground church worship service. After his church was seized, he continued to meet in other places. This is not happening in China. This is right here in North America. God commands us to continue assembling. Here's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10. We are not to forsake the assembling together of ourselves as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. This now, pastors being arrested for worshiping Jesus on Sunday in their church is a sign of the end times. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for religious liberty for Pastor Tim, that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be proclaimed through his example. God bless his wife. God bless his little children, especially the girls that were crying as they see their daddy hauled away in the paddy wagon for worshiping Jesus Christ and preaching the gospel. God, end this persecution by Premier James Jason Kinney in Alberta. We pray against that demon in Jesus' name. The Old Testament church knew about the power of God. Even before the time of Jesus, they experienced the inner workings of the Holy Spirit. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you will first receive the Holy Spirit into your heart, right? That's what it means when you're born again, is I, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask you, because of what you did for me on the cross, to come into me and take over my life. Jesus, when he moves into your life, will give you the Holy Spirit in the sense of being born again. Wow, you have an amazing broadcast and you pray all the time on that program. There's, you know, I get my, if, if I have any criticism of my show, which I do, <laughs> but, but people say, you don't pray enough, Jim, you need to pray more on the show and you pray all the time on your show. Thank you, sir. It's a daily half hour show. And we pray. He's on every day, people. We want to applaud that because yes. you don't know how hard it is to be on every day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and he's been on for about eight years, did you for say? For eight years. We're now on eight networks uh, and, and PTL. We're on 16 online platforms. We're every day or weekend in 222 million available TV homes wow. across the country. Now, you're on, on our network, uh, which is in New York City. I always say New York City and Los Angeles because they're the two big cities. But we're on all the cities in America, all across America. Just unbelievable outreach on the, 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 the voice of the prophets, really call it. And his program is so different than other shows. Yes. So they're on. And I want every one of you that is, don't realize what his show is to be able to find it now and watch Dr. Gordon Chaps on his show, uh, Pray in the Name of Jesus. Amen. Pray in the Name of Jesus. So how did you develop all this for well, the show and it all started that? after it, I lost my career in the Navy, I became a full-time activist. And, <laughs> and we started going state to state. I preached in over 26 states. I'll come to your church if you give me a sofa wow. to sleep on. Um, oh. But we, we will go from place to place holding rallies for Jesus name. And that's how we've helped change bad policies in 13 yeah. states. So for example, in Florida, my friend Chaplain Danny Harvey got in trouble. He was a hospital chaplain for, uh, for eight years and fourth generation Baptist preacher always prayed in Jesus name. But the HR director for Leesburg Regional Medical uh, Center, the hospital, called him in and said, if you don't stop praying in Jesus name, we're gonna fire you. Ah. Well, he took a stand and he kept praying in Jesus name. They fired him the next day. Well, ah. I took action. I flew to Florida. Now who was gonna fire him? The hospital wow. was gonna fire the chaplain for praying in Jesus wow. name. That, People, can you imagine it, I mean, that? I just, it's I, driving me crazy, it Lord. It drives me crazy yeah. too, because I've been in the hospital, so, not me personally, but with my mom. That's all we and, have is Jesus. And, and when the chaplain comes in, right. And, and praise in Jesus' name, it, but you know what? Very few do. 
Well, we I've took a stand. That. That's <laughs> ridiculous, and we're no. going to stop it. Yes, amen. We've just got to say, no, amen. no ground. We're yes. not going to do it. Amen. We're not going to give up Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. You're crazy. Well, there was a victory. They went and asked the Buddhists to give up Buddha. <laughs> they wouldn't ask any of the other religions to give up what they believe. Well, they're not going to have us giving up Jesus. I'm, I'm good on my platform here. Well, <laughs> I, I went to Florida. I flew down there. I met with Chaplain Harvey. We appeared together on Fox News, and we organized 30 churches for a rally, and we had 1,200 citizens on a Saturday. We marched around that hospital, and we wow. wore, we wore T-shirts. There's a picture of them. Wow. My Jesus, my stand. And the next day, the CEO of the hospital resigned in the face of public scandal. Oh. The hospital apologized, full page ad in the newspaper. They said, it's okay to pray in Jesus' name in our hospital, <laughs> but, but Chaplain Harvey never got his job back. Mm. So there was a price oh. to be paid. Uh, yes. But now there is religious freedom in that hospital. They Amen. can pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we do things like that. Um, Wow, Chapel, Chaplain powerful. Harvey was, was taught by his father, Colossians 3.17. The Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. giving thanks to God the Father. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 People get excited over this. My God. This is the very foundation of the word of the living God, that we must never, ever, 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 ever let people say, Jesus' name is outlawed. Amen. Doesn't that rile you up yes. a little bit? Yes. Wow. He's your Savior. You'd wow. be, you're going to hell without Jesus. That's right. That's what we believe. That's right. Christmas is his birthday. They want to take that away, too, by the way. Has the Christian religion always been frowned upon by the Pentagon? Well, I, I, I don't understand why our, our army and navy... It's interesting, I, I, yeah. There is a I battle. have a son in the army, and I, I I better not talk about it because I'll get in trouble. I'm sure. <laughs> I just want to get him in trouble, actually, because I'm in trouble all the time. So, uh, I'm used to that. But but, you know, they're putting they're putting things into action in the army right now. Yeah. They they're having whole courses. I, I can't I can't talk about because I'll get in. I don't want to get my son in trouble. I can talk about it. But he's in the army. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you in trouble because you're, you, you just live in trouble. That's it. <laughs> That's what I do. But, but yes, uh, things are getting better because we've twice petitioned. and, and But how can we as a Christian nation, how can we as Christian believers, the church is a great army of God, and yet we're letting, the, we're letting these people ban yeah. Just what they did to you. Well, we have you, a map. You could have been court-martialed for this. Uh, in, in fact, I was. I, there's a map here I want to show of atheist lawsuits around America okay. against the name of Jesus. You can see every, every dot on the map is a different lawsuit or threat of a lawsuit filed by the, uh, the Freedom From Religion Foundation or groups like that who want to silence the name well, of they Jesus. They hate me, too. But we win Freedom because... Freedom From Religion. Right. But e the law is on our side. The First Amendment of the Constitution says we can have religious freedom, we can have freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and that goes into the courts sometime, like in Indiana. There was a bad judge, David Hamilton, who ruled in the case of Henricks versus Bosma that the Speaker of the House of Indiana, uh, Brian Bosma at the time, could not invite a pastor to come and say the opening invocation in Jesus' name. The judge ruled, and this is a Democrat judge, David Hamilton, he said, it's okay to pray to Allah, but that, because that's non-sectarian. But if you pray in Jesus' name, that's too sectarian, and that might offend somebody. So one religion is okay, but Jesus is not okay. We got involved. My lawyers with the Rutherford Institute filed amicus briefs uh, with the Indiana Attorney General. They appealed, and it was reversed. On a two-to-one decision, it's now okay to pray in Jesus' name in the state legislature of Indiana. It, it, is the Pentagon, is our nation becoming anti-Christ? You feel like you're winning, right? Yes. In many areas. We have twice petitioned the Pentagon. Don't you get tired of being thrown at, having mud thrown in your face? Well, but, but we always win be, because the name of Jesus is higher and the people are with us. So we have petitioned the, the Congress has now twice 
with, with encouragement from our people, have changed federal law to protect religious freedom, not just for chaplains, but for all of our troops, are now able to have religious expression and not be punished in their evaluations for lifting up the name of Jesus. So it's now enshrined in law that they have freedom that wasn't there when I was a chaplain. Wow. D- does the military uh, r- respect other religions or restrict other religions in the same way they do Christianity? No. Uh, chaplains in the military really have three jobs, and that is to provide for members of our own faith, to facilitate for members of other faiths. I invited my my atheist to come and teach our Bible study, right? But we, I advocated for my Jewish sailor and his right to have kosher food. I, I fought for the First Amendment right of my Muslim sailors to be able to pray to Allah on the ship's microphone. But when it was my turn, I insist on the same freedom to pray in Jesus' name. It's like in, in the Old Testament, um, when, when Elijah was facing the prophets, he said, you guys pray to your God, and I'll pray to my God. And the yes. God who answers by fire, he is God. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's have a contest. You know, our God is bigger, yes. and I'm not afraid of a little competition. Amen. Wow. Your book is available right now. Yes, it is. This looks like a fairly new book. It, and your foreword is by Alan Keyes. Uh, How to Liberate the World, a Step-by-Step Guide to Take Back your, commu- your country, yes. your community, whatever. This is, people, if you only realize how deep this goes, mm-hmm. he's giving us victory stories, yeah. but these have been hard fought wars mm-hmm. that you've been through yes. and others are going through. And if we don't keep it up, they're gonna, we're in cancel culture. We've been talking about that a lot, but we're <laughs> not gonna allow it. Don't allow them to cancel Jesus. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Order the book today, will you? Yeah. Amen. Your book, How to Liberate the World, tells how people can take back their country. In right. fact, the subtitle says that the book is a step-by-step guide to doing that. Yeah. Why do you believe this is a book for our times now? Sure. Well, I tried to write a political manual for everyday citizens. You don't have to run for office yeah. to take back your country. You've run for office, haven't you? Well, I have, and, and we'll get to that. But in the book, we show, for example, 30 short chapters, 30 power tools, like how to write a press release and get your story in the newspapers, yeah. how to organize a rally or a Ooh. petition and get a 1,000 yeah. people to show up. Every right. church needs That's this it. book, then, right? Yeah. We need to know how to do those things. How to lobby your elected official and have a meeting with them to get them to change their votes, or how to run for office yourself and win. I followed these steps before I wrote the book, and I won my own election to the Colorado legislature. I was a state representative, and this is a book for how you can run for office and win. We need more Christians to run for local school board, to run for state representative, for county commissioner, and, and we need more Christians in Congress in the United States. Someone watching this is, is you're going to get this book, How to Liberate the World, and you're going to run for office and help Donald Trump take back America, right? <laughs> Every chapter in your book, it seems like, is a tool that gives readers uh, a, a tool for becoming effective Christian activists. Why did you give the readers these levers of power and are they used by other activists are they a sure well well, these are the same common political tools that are often used by the left to take away our freedoms Mm -hmm. right oh there's a chapter in here about when you should file you really believe we can win don't you well i think christians ought to use it's like it's like when david slew goliath right he used goliath's own sword against him to, after, the, after the slingshot, he used the, the Goliath's own sword to take off his head. And we can use the same power tools that are being okay. used against us by the left to now stand up for Jesus and establish the kingdom yeah. of God in American Amen. politics. Wow. This Amen. is so important, we can do it. people, what he's yeah. saying. I've been at the point where I think, boy, America's just gone down to hell. I mean, you know, it's just on the wrong direction. And yet here's a man who's <coughs> battled Goliath and, and, and has won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so it's so important. 
Why did anti-Jesus complainers sue against pastors praying in uh, Jesus' name before council meetings in New York? Do you know that story? Yes. Uh, Supervisor John Alberger of Greece, New York, was under fire because he invited pastors from the community to come and say a prayer before the city council meetings in New York. And I was briefly involved. I sent him a one-page fax. I said, uh, Supervisor, we've been fighting this issue around the country. You should hire these lawyers with Alliance Defending Freedom. And he did. He, he, he hired those lawyers, and they went all the way to the Supreme Court. First they, they won, and then they lost. And then at the Supreme Court in 2015, in Greece versus Galloway, we won a 5-4 to four decision, and they ruled it's okay to pray in Jesus' name, even in a city council meeting. You can use sectarian language in your prayers, and now the Supreme Court has reversed all of these bad attacks by the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Wow. Because you can curse in a meeting. You know, you can use swear words. Why can't you pray in the name of Jesus? People, you all act like you're stunned by what he's saying. It's true, though. We've got to stand up. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I want amen. you to get his book. I, would you order one for your pastor? Oh. Order one of you and get to your pastor. Yeah. Uh, get the, uh, the 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 three of them at least. I don't know if you do a baker's dozen on this yeah, book. Yeah, we or not. absolutely have put together a baker's dozen. That's thirteen of the books for a hundred and fifty dollar donation to the ministry. That's for the baker's dozen or the friends and family, which is three for a fifty dollar love gift. And Dad, if I can just say, and I think for every every pastor, every church, every believer. We are coming to a time, we are seeing it as 2020 crept up on us in 2021 now. We are seeing right now that the church does not know how to defend itself. We do not know how to work in the political systems that are coming against the church to <coughs> silence the word of God because they are after, they have been threatened by the word of God. And so I just want to encourage you. I thought to myself, if I had this tool a year ago, what a difference. And I've had to learn the hard way by walking That's through right. the legal battles that came against this oh, ministry. God. And if I had a tool that would help this ministry, every pastor, and I'm saying this serious right now, every pastor, you must prepare the leadership in the churches. We have to be armed. We have to understand our rights, our freedoms as Americans, as believers. We must take a stand. And many are saying before it's too late. Because, you know, Dad, you say this, the Word of God will become hate speech. That is what they are after. They are after the Word, which is the power of Jesus Christ. And so I, I really do, I urge every person right now yeah. to order this. Lord, will you equip us, Father? We know right now at this very moment, there are people monitoring this show, the Jim Baker Show, the voice of the Pro Prophets platform. They've told us, we're watching you. The, in the legal system, they are watching this broadcasting. They're trying, they're trying to stop us. make one mistake that they can go to court with. That's right. We and know that. Silence their voice. They've tried to silence me so much that you know I'm yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm getting and, <laughs> paranoid. And, and got, but you know, fire. can I just say I'm like, guess what? I thank God every day when I am told that. I said, good. May they may they be delivered. And when they watch this show in their duty to monitor us, may the Spirit of God fall upon you as you watch this broadcast. And may the word, Amen. may the blinders Amen. come off of you. That's what I'm believing okay, for. I, My good. The Bible is the solid rock. That is the yes. foundation of, our, of our, what we believe. Amen. But we've got to have material yes. that will help us. And help this us. is a very, very unusual book. It is. There's one chapter in the book about how to do fundraising. The yeah. book is called How to Liberate the World. But if you learn how to do fundraising for your little nonprofit organization, it can become a big nonprofit organization. That one chapter yeah. alone is worth the price of the book. Yeah. Just a $20 suggested donation. Let me tell you a victory story about Virginia. We had a crisis back in, in 2010, I think, when the superintendent of the police chaplains, all the state trooper chaplains, were told, don't pray in Jesus' name. Well, 17 of them resigned wow. rather than deny Christ. Yeah, These are heroes who took a stand. My friends like Chaplain Rex uh, Carter and Chaplain Mike Honecker, these were two of the 17 chaplains, so I got involved. I went to Richmond, 
and I led a rally outside of the governor's mansion. We had a thousand people show up. I think we have a picture of this. I'm here with Matt Staver and we, we petitioned the governor and he said, no, we're not gonna let the chaplains pray in Jesus name. So then we petitioned the legislature and the legislature- There's something wrong with a governor who will deny Jesus Christ. Right. There's millions of Christians. Right. They, they, it's not even smart to eliminate so many of your people who could vote for you. you well, know, the governor said, think. he said, I don't pray in Jesus name. So why should I let my chaplains do that? And, and so that was his argument. But we went to the legislature and they tried to pass it through the state house of Virginia, the assembly and, and the state Senate. And it was blocked by a candidate for governor, Cray Deeds. Meanwhile, there was a pro Jesus candidate running for governor, Bob McDonnell at the time. And we organized churches to take back the vote. In the, in the upcoming election, it was like 43 to 41, very close, but we faxed voter guides, listing the names of every anti-Jesus legislator, listing the names of the two candidates for governor, one's for Jesus, one's against Jesus, and we sent that to 2,500 churches across the state of Virginia. Six weeks later, there was a landslide election, 59 to 41. The wow. Jesus candidate, Bob yeah. McDonald, was elected governor of Virginia. We petitioned him with 14,000 petitions, and he reversed the ban on trooper chaplains. All 17 chaplains were invited to pray in Jesus' wow. name, Amen. and they got their issue back. Amen. You know, I want to say something. In 1972, right before this man that I'm about to mention passed away, gave a playbook just like you did for the opposite side. The difference is this was a community leader activist that knew how to successfully bring people together to make a change. Sal Unlinsky, you know that name. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a book called Rules for Radical. This is a book that has been used by many politicians yes. to be able to change the vote. This is as powerful as this book, Rules by Radicals. Yes. To be able to organize Christianity. I have realized in the last 23 years that Christianity has never been organized in order to mobilize and be active in the community to sway the vote for what they believe in. We needed your book, Chaplain. Thank we you. needed your book to know what to do. We get letters and emails and messages. What do we do when we went through what we went through during the 2020 situation? We didn't even know what to do. We didn't know how to organize the people to help us slowly. We had a man yesterday, Steve Strang, that helped us put together a petition, a small, but powerful petition to send to television programs to be able to fight back the onslaught of everything that was coming against a ministry. You have to understand something. If you can organize a petition, a voice, a people to be able to stand for what you believe in, you will get the right people in office to fight for you. Amen. Chaplain, I have to understand this. Rules for Radicals is the playbook for the left. This could be the key to Christianity in the 21st century on how we fight back with everything that they're trying to do to silence the church right now. If we don't do something, if we don't organize right now to be able to fight against everything that is coming against Christianity, we have no fight left in us right now. There are pastors that are going to jail because they're not willing to stand up, is what they're saying. I have to say this. I don't think we know how to stand until we read this book. How to gather people together. You have understood, Dad, the power of bringing people together and what that does in the environment that came against you in the 1980s. And even now, listen, people... If we don't fight with the power of attorneys, I know you jokingly said in the past, it, you used to have the Bible in one hand, and now you need lawyers in another hand to be able to, <laughs> and you know what? This book proves that statement is very true. 
that if you don't have lawyers on your side to be able to help you stand and fight for the freedoms that we believe in in the Bible, we have no fight in us in the courtroom well, right now. If the now. Christian faith were to remove from the military, how would that affect our combat readiness? I'm, I'm concerned about it. I, I just see what's going on in the Army and what's going on in, the, in, in all the Air Force, or the Air Force, the, the oh. whole Army, all the military. Mm -hmm. How is it going to affect us as a nation? You are, you are repeating the same words that General George Washington said in 1775 when he founded the Chaplain Corps in the Army in, in 76. Uh, he said, we cannot expect to have the blessing of God upon our arms, upon our troops, if we continue to insult God with our impiety and folly. And so he was concerned, and that's why he appointed chaplains to every regiment, every company, they would be commissioned as officers and saluted. And if any soldier disrespected the chaplain, he would be court-martialed by order of General George Washington. Wow. And now 200 years later, we're court-martialing the chaplains mm. or giving letters of reprimand because they stand up for Jesus. Everything is upside down it in America compared to, compared to the way our founding fathers designed it. Where are we headed right now as a nation? Would you say overall as you, as you travel around and you're on TV every day? I wrote in, in 1999, I published my master's thesis and my, my premise today is the same. And that is, there's no more middle ground that, that America at the time was, was sort of muddled. Everyone could call themselves a Christian and live in sin at the same time. But now it's not that way. Now the, the Christians are becoming more purified and holy. The, the, the anti-Christians are becoming more demonic. And there is no more middle ground in America. You're either with Jesus or you're against him. And, and we are seeing that in, in our politics. Everything is so di divisive and divided but I think it's, it's a good thing in a way because Christ is purifying his bride yes, yeah. and his church is, is going to worship him in Jesus Amen. name. Even if we're punished, Lord, yeah. we are going to stand up. Uh, there's somebody out there uh, that, that you may be thinking, what if the government came to me and what if they threatened to take away my job or my pension or my career? Uh, what if I what if I lost my house? What if I got an eviction notice like like Dr. Chaps did with his wife? Uh, would I be willing to take a stand for Jesus? And if that's you, if you're willing to stand for Christ, no matter the cost, I want to offer to pray with you today. Yes. Would you, maybe uh, someone at home yes. and, and here in the studio, let's just pray. Amen. Yes. Father in heaven, we devote ourselves to you, and we ask you to be the Lord of lords and King of kings in our heart. Yes. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and inspire me that even if the government comes after me with threats, even if I were to lose my job or my pension or my home, Jesus, I would stand for you because I want to keep my soul. Yes. And Jesus, you are worth more to me than everything else this world has to offer. And in eternity, I pray that you will reward those who stand with you. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Amen. Our time's gone for today, but I really pray to God you'll get this book. I want you to order the baker's dozen is how much money? Yes, it's $150 donation. $150 gift, yes. which helps with our SOS to save our stations. Yes. We, we've had the cancel culture try to cancel us. Mm -hmm. And we, just this, about a week ago, we got our credit cards credit back. Processing, yes. Which Amen. took a long time. The, the warfare is so much different than it was in the old days. And uh, you, you had atheists that were speaking out, but now you've got it politically. That's right. In the, in, in, and in the, the financial minute, industry. The financial industry mm -hmm. that is so complicated that you have to understand it. And this is one of the only books I know of that gives you the keys of how to liberate the world, how to, how to, how to go in and do these things. Yeah. And here's a man, and, I, and I'm, I'm just shocked that Dr. Chaps is on television every day. Yeah. Well, you give me a platform because yeah. the cancel culture is trying to take us off of YouTube. They're trying to give us strikes when we talk about certain things that you're not allowed to mention on the Internet. Uh, Google is censoring. 
Everybody is against us, but you, sir, are giving our little TV show mm -hmm. a national voice, mm -hmm. and we're bypassing the cancel culture. Lord. We're going straight into television homes. Yes. And, and the, the church is waking up. And my friend Mike Lindell with my pillow. Yes. He's, he's a sponsor of our program. Good. We're on PIJ on News. Here's our website, by the way. Uh, PrayInJesusName.org. We have a toll-free prayer line. You can call us at 866-Obey-God. Isn't that a great phone number? I love Eight, that. 866-Obey-God. Uh, I think we have an address there. And you can watch PIJN News every weekday on the PTL network at 530 Eastern. I think that's 430 Central. Yeah. And also at 6 o'clock in the morning. Please join us in prayer every Monday through Friday. And I want to honor you, sir, uh, because you have stood strong for so many years. I came to Morningside. I, I'm a new visitor. I've just met you this morning. But... When I came onto the campus, I said, my gosh, Morningside is a prophetic fulfillment of that word that he birthed in you decades ago for heritage, yeah. right? And you're still caring for the elderly. Amen. You still have uh, housing for people to come and visit. And God has not removed from you the promises. Yeah. In fact, I'm prophesying to you that your, your latter days are going to be greater than your oh, former God, days. Oh, God, let it be. And God is going to fulfill that prophetic vision you've always had. Amen. And I want to thank you because when you mentioned that even how to finance these, mm -hmm. yeah. your crusade or yes. how to do it, how to yes. do you these things yeah. is in here. Because one of the things kids, I have the hardest time in our school is teaching them, you got to raise money. Yeah. You got to pay the bills. That's you right. can't just say, oh, well, God's going to bless me. You got to figure out, you know, God's got to bless that part part of your brain that tells you how to raise money. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people think that that's carnal, so th they don't g ever get it, so they don't ever do anything, you know. And this book has all that information. So you get a baker's dozen and pass them out Amen. to people, to your friends, to your relatives, to your church people, to the deacons in your church, because it's time we stand up for Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Nana, I know you're, you're the sergeant here that is fighting <laughs> to me? save our network. And, I am. And, uh, Absolutely. We're believing I am. God yes. for a miracle where people are responding. Yes. We need a great miracle this Amen. month. Amen. And, and by the end of the month, the next month, we need. We need to be able to be settled yes. and solid. Amen. And uh, we, we've been having the $1,000 super SOS offerings. Yes. Let's still do this offering yes. that this week uh, we mentioned, and we were sending out the blanket. Oh, I love Yes, the Miracles Happen blanket right there. That's from Miss Joan Hunter, who is on the broadcast with us. And she's partnering with our ministry and helping us to make this available to you as she is believing God for a miracle with us. And so that's the Just Don't Quit. That's our super SOS offer for a $1,000 love gift. And in this, you're going to receive that Miracles Happens blanket along with her book, Just Don't Quit. Pastor, your book, you can make it. And we're also sending you her CD, His Healing Promises. That's for a love gift. That's that $1,000 SOS gift to the ministry. But I think most importantly, you know, people are responding because we recognize, Dad, that we need the voice of the prophets. You created this platform that the prophets, that the men and women of God would have a place to not be censored. When have we ever heard that the church is being censored, that the prophets are being deplatformed? And so if there was ever a time to get behind a ministry that is creating a platform for these men and women of God, it is now. You know, and so I thank you for giving. I thank you for calling us, for standing with us. And many are answering, in the, answering that call. You're sowing that seed 
And I love it because you're sowing into good soil. And we will stand for the voice of the prophets. And so you can join us by giving that SOS love gift. That's that $1,000 love gift to the ministry to help us. In return, we'll send you these beautiful gifts. But most importantly, we are declaring that this ministry will proclaim the name of Jesus. We will allow the voice of the prophets to be heard. And you can call us right now at one 888 1588 and remember go to the website jimbakershow.com all of our offers that we've made available to you throughout the years are available there you can do your shopping and all the giving comes back to help this ministry to stay on the air at jimbakershow.com we want to know that you are out there please stand yes. with us today our time's gone for this broadcast but for those people who can give that SOS yes. offer we need a miracle. That's right. And I'm just believing God. The program that you saw today with Dr. Gordon Chaps is amazing. Yes. This man has done what we need to have Amen. done. Amen. He spoke out when he was canceled out. Mm. But he said, no, you can't cancel Amen. Jesus. That's Amen. right. And he stood up for Jesus. And his book is going to, to help liberate a lot of you out there we need to know this but you can watch on the network that we just opened up this last yes, year amen. yes this is a miracle this, this is, is one miracle. of the programs brand new for our network and, and yes. brand new to a it's lot exciting. of homes it's exciting because i love what it says on the back of your book this is by dr alan keith this book needs to be in the hands of every millennial and Bible believing pastor in America, yes. I think that's Thank fascinating. Yes. Amen. That, he, that he hit the millennials yes. and said, yes. Let, Here we go, open your eyes, millennials. Yes. Let's we help must. his word come true and pass it out. Amen. Yes. Amen. I do have to leave. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Chaps, yes. for being with us. Yes. <laughs> what an honor to meet you. Right. And I want everybody to tune into your broadcast yes. every morning, every Amen. night. Amen. <laughs> we have to go. Yes. Call me, please. 1 888 988 1588. Toll free and make that offering today. Yes. God loves you. He really does. Keep up the good work, Dr. Chaps. Yes. <laughs> thank I'm you, praying sir. for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God loves you. He really does. <laughs> Bye-bye. We love you. Amen. Thank you.